Hi, I'm Ihab Syed. I'm the founder and director of innovation at Biome. And uh, Biome uh, is a research and development led company which places biological systems at the heart of its inspiration. Well, in the simplest forms, um, we, we have three ways of uh, trying to create an impact within the industry. One of them is bio-based materials, and what we do is we take waste streams um, from food waste to agricultural waste to synthetic waste, and we combine it with natural processes as well as mixing it with natural substrates to create materials uh, for the construction industry. And we've also developed an interlocking construction system, which we have an international pattern on. Um, and so there are lots of different ways we're looking to create an impact um, because it's quite, it's quite a complex industry to, to tackle. So one of them is mycelium, the vegetative part of mushrooms. Uh, it's usually what's found underground, growing in the soil. And we are harvesting this power, growing it into some sheets which then replace uh, polyurethane insulation or rock wool insulation. They provide excellent uh, insulation values, they are fireproof and of course fully bio-based. So completely biodegradable at end of life. Um, I think there's been too many incidents recently that have showcased or exposed the construction industries um, um, approaches currently where synthetic materials are used and they're not um, actually conducive to our health and well-being and also sustainable materials tend to be quite expensive. With our material because we're using a um, self-multiplying living organism we're able to create affordable materials that are still just as sustainable and um, even healthier than the most uh, materials that are currently on the market. So one of the things is perceptions or um, the industry's uh, stigmas around natural materials. They're usually perceived to be um, just something that hippies play around with and not necessarily something that could compare to synthetic uh, mechanical properties. Uh, but we're actually finding that we're able to achieve some quite spectacular properties by just using natural remedies and learning from natural processes and other organisms and how they're um, solving the problems that um, any material would face. And we're implementing that in our materials. Mycelium is actually one of the biggest organisms on the planet. The single biggest living organism is mycelium found underneath the forest in North America. So, you know, Around the world, there are an infinite amount of species of mushrooms, all with different properties, all with different diets, and which can be utilized to create a range of different materials. Hence, if we you know, create localized solution on a global scale, we will never run out of such material. It's a resource which nature provides for us in the first place, and we can just tap into it to create the solutions of the future. I think it's a really interesting movement because it's almost going back to um, you know, ancient times where people just used the resources around them and made, made something out of them and made it work and worked with nature, very much in tune with nature, worked with natural processes, manipulated um, organisms in, in various ways to get what they wanted out of them. And we're sort of doing that now except in a much more advanced and um, with a lot more theory backing it all up. Um, and I think it's a really beautiful uh, way to just go back to being more in tune with nature and understanding the world that we live in and, and the organisms that we're part of. Um, so I see it as quite a poetic um, way that the industry is going towards. Um, and there are so many benefits from an economic perspective and as well as of course the social environmental benefits. Um, but I think one of the things that I find particularly interesting is using biological thinking or systems thinking to approach problems that aren't necessarily physical. So not only with materials and products, but rather trying to work out how to run things and how to form relational models out of um, just mimicking biological systems and how nature um, works. Um, another barrier that any startup doing what we're doing um, is facing a go in, uh, or, or uh, seeing is accreditation, uh, mortgages and insurance, anything relating to the legal side of, of buildings, uh, particularly insurance. 
And um, the reason we're trying to, we're finding it a lot more difficult is we're actually having to create our own standards um, and it costs a lot more than just you know accrediting a material. So we're having to put in, in place procedures and policies that work with a future of biomaterials um, in order to just get our stuff on the market, which is quite a challenge, but we found a lot of other applications where impact could be made while we wait um, to get the accreditation done. So my background's in design engineering and while I was doing a master's at Brunel University I did a year-long uh, research project looking at waste streams and um, the construction industry and the figures that came out of the industry were really shocking so I decided to look at how we can start to implement change and, and do something about it and develop the construction industry um, and when we introduced it to um, the market um, and just to see what architects' thoughts were, we were really encouraged to start a company and patent the idea and take it forward. We then found that there aren't appropriate materials for our system, so we embarked on a whole new journey of material development. Um, and that's, why, that's how we're here today. We're an award-winning company now. We've got um, a team of over 15 people um, and two locations in London. So. Well, OpenCell was a great step for us. We went from a bunch of boxes in the corner of a room and then all of a sudden we came here, we had the proper space. I was able to build up a full lab which is sterile to the best extent it can be inside a container. And it really enabled us to structure our manufacturing, to create more, um, uh, more protocols that we can follow accurately and to really demonstrate a small scale manufacturing which can project how a company can expand and actually hit the market in a feasible time frame with the appropriate funding, the appropriate facility and the appropriate research.